Hey everyone, thanks for joining in. Uh, in today's video, we will talk about all the uh, new things that were implemented in or added in Flutterflow in December. Um, I actually extract the list of the things that we talked about. Uh, today we will talk about, and we actually before we begin. I just want to say thank you for everyone that uh, subscribed to the channel. Uh, my channel actually hit 1000 subscribers, which is huge for me. Thank you very much. And also I want to mention that uh, every Wednesday uh, we actually did uh, live sessions with Josh about talking about the, uh, the new uh, things that were implemented in Flutterflow. But I think this is not a good strategy for my channel. So uh, from now on, I will try to uh, make new videos about what is new and the day of the release. So I will try when Flutterflow release something new, I will try to make a video and just release it on the same day or the next day. So you can be up to date uh, in no time. So just watch those videos and you'll know everything that is uh, that you need to know uh, regarding Flutterflow, uh, but because uh, we didn't did uh, we didn't did uh, for December, this video will be for December. So the, those are all the updates uh, for December, uh, except for Superbase. I'll probably do a separate video for Superbase uh, if I see that uh, there is potential in this and that uh, many people of you don't know how to deal with it because they're a lot of documentations and videos already. So thanks very much uh, for this intro and let's begin. So today we'll talk about the brand new custom code editor, uh, the barcode widget, the text field input mask and filters, the, the track to resize, uh, the implement the, of uh, animations for containers, uh, the show padding in the app builder. So this is one update that, that was one update and the other update was transform widget uh, we have also upload media via api we have uh, upgraded project comments we have disable uh, buttons and we have the new action which is copy to clipboard and we'll talk about the other improvements because other improvements uh, for me are also essentials and they are very uh, very some of them are very good improvements as well so i will keep that in the side over here i hope you can see uh, at least some of the text and then we'll go we'll dive into it so i create the page uh, that it says uh, new and this is the uh, month and the year uh, so this is uh, 12, uh, December 2022. Uh, and then uh, let's begin with the first one, which is a brand new custom code editor. Uh, if I go over here, this is the this is the brand new custom editor. I will not go into details uh, about the brand new editor because uh, it's not brand new as the, as the recording of the video. And I have already did a video, my first impressions of the new uh, so to say Anton EDE. Uh, so if you haven't watched this, uh, the link will be in the description. You can click it and watch my first impressions about this uh, IDE. Uh, what I can actually show you uh, right now is that uh, there are a few things that uh, changed uh, according to when I recorded last. Uh, so one of the things that I wanted to show you real quickly is that if you want to actually create a new uh, action or a new widget. So for, first of all, let me say you what is the difference between, between the custom function and custom widget and custom actions, because there are a lot of people, the newcomers don't know uh, what is the difference between them. Uh, I mean, regarding uh, the code. So what you can code and what you cannot code. The difference is that with the custom functions, you don't have the opportunity to add packages. So that means that uh, you don't have connection and you also don't have connection uh, to uh, the external code or the building code in, um, 
in Featherflow. Because when you go to custom widget, for example, or custom action, you have this button, which is uh, exclude for compilation, which actually means, uh, in theory, uh, that means that you can actually have a code that will uh, be connected with the source code of Flutterflow. So what I mean by that, if, for example, if I click, um, let me see what uh, are the, yeah, for example, this one, upload any file type that I created. If you haven't watched the video, uh, it is in my channel, how to upload any kind of uh, type file. Uh, and here right now you can see that I have an import, which is the Flutterflow, Flutterflow widgets. And with this import, you have to execute it from compilation because right now, as it's from today, as for today, um, the, e the IDE uh, doesn't know about uh, the source code of the data flow, so it will give you errors. So this is uh, mm -hmm. something you have to know, uh, and uh, there is no actually uh, no one can actually tell you about this. I think uh, you only have to know it at the end of the day. So um, so yeah, this is pretty important to know. Uh, I will say this uh, as many times as uh, I need it because I, as I need because this is very important information. And the other thing that I wanted to show you uh, from the last time that I talk about this IDE when I had my first impressions uh, is that right now, when you actually copy and paste uh, a function, for example, not a function, but in my case, it's a custom action. So when you copy and paste uh, code, so let me just try and fix this a little bit. So let's, uh, uh, let's get rid of most of the code because most of this code is uh, actually a common code. You don't need it. Uh, and when I have this code, for example, and let me say that this will be something, it, it should be a different name uh, than this one. So I can show you what I mean. So if you have the same, so if you copy paste the code over here, and you have the same name, so copy and paste the same name and paste it over to the action name or widget name. It works for both, for action name and widget name. It, it that, it's not working for custom functions. So this works only for custom functions and custom actions. So if you copy and paste the same name over here, and now if I press save, watch what will happen on the right side. So if I press save on the right side, you can actually see that all my uh, arguments are actually added automatically. So if I click over here, you can see that I have the, the document reference. And the document reference, I have to specify which uh, collection I want to uh, take the reference from. But in reality, if you have string, for example, so let's uh, change this to string and I save it over here, you can see right now, this is changed to string. So it's very convenient to actually copy and paste code and all the arguments will be added. Keep in mind that if you are uh, if you want to add dependency, uh, even if you have the import over here, it will not it will not Im import your dependency. So if I go back and take some import, so let's say for example the SCV, so the SCV dependency. So if I put it over here and click save right now, click save you will see that the dependency is not added automatically. So keep in mind, uh, keep that in mind, you have to add it yourself. Uh, so that was what I want to talk about, the brand new uh, custom, uh, custom code editor. So let's talk about the second thing, which is the barcode, barcode widget. Uh, we have a new widget, which is the barcode widget. You can add it by clicking this plus over here, or go into the widgets and here you have the barcode as well uh, but just write barcode and this is the barcode so i already added is this one over here and you have a different types of barcodes so you have 1d barcodes and 2d barcodes and the 1d barcodes are actually you have i think all the varieties of the barcodes out there and I think the most uh, common one is probably this one and this one as well. 
uh, and this one for books it's used for books and I think this is all I know that for barcodes maybe someone knows better uh, but this is the value so this is the actual value of the barcode so if you actually put some uh, numbers it will actually be numbers and you can actually see the barcode changing in real time and you have the width and the height of course the color uh, usually it's black uh, and the background color uh, in this case I think it's unset and you have the option to show the text or hide the text uh, wherever you prefer and the interesting part here is that we have also 2d codes and when you click here i have the qr code and i have the data max and all the other types of 2d codes so the qr code of course will be the most popular one and the most used one i think and the other one that i actually to be honest i didn't know uh, is the data max the data matrix and this one is very uh, popular as well, at least here in Sweden. Uh, they're using it a lot. Uh, and also they implement it in their ID cards and passports. And I guess it's not only in Sweden, maybe in some other countries as well. Um, but yeah, I think those two are the most popular one that you will probably use. And going uh, further, uh, we, go the we have the text field, input, mask, and filters so if i if we go to text field the new options over here are on the right and we have the mask and if we, if we hover on the i it will just say uh, format the input by a given mask and match to a number a to a letter so if you have uh so for example uh you have this will be this will be the mask that needs to be uh, represent. So if we click over here, uh, right now, of course, it's not working. I don't know if this will actually work in a preview mode, um, but let's see. I'm not sure, to be honest, uh, but let's see. So if I click over here and if I add something, yes, probably it's not working on preview mode, right? It should work on test mode and also in uh, run mode but it's not working in preview mode uh, but this is the mask this is the idea how the how the numbers will look like uh, like a phone number so this is a good like a date this can be used for dates and this can be used for phone numbers for example and we can also have custom masks as well so if i click custom mask uh, this is uh, how we do it we have uh, this is representing a number and this is representing a letter so we can have all kind of combinations so for example if you have like postal code for example that have two uh, letters and numbers two numbers two letters and two numbers for example this will be the mask that we want to use and then we can have a dash over here for example so this will be the mask so the idea of the mask is that wherever you write, it will, confer, it will uh, convert to a mask. So uh, if you actually don't have two numbers over here, it, will, it should give you an error. Uh, so this is the idea uh, of the mask. And we also have filters here. And keep in mind that if you actually click on a mask, so if I click on this mask, you don't see the filters anymore uh, for some reason i don't know why exactly because i think you should be able to use both of them i'm not sure but i think so uh, but yeah if you click none on mask then you can use filters so filters is that filter the, uh, the input so what uh, what that means uh, that means that uh, you can only have uh, alphabetic uh, for example uh, input on your fields or you can only have digits, for example, in your fields, or you can ha only have English letters or custom regex. Uh, the idea is that this is different than the keyboard because in theory, you can change the keyboard uh, to be uh, numbers only, uh, but in reality, uh, the person or the user can actually change the keyboard and switch it back to uh, letters. So in theory, 
uh, the user can uh, import letters, but you don't you don't want letters in this input field. For example, you only uh, want digits because this is some kind of a number or something like that. So that's why this is actually restricting users from uh, entering other uh, than uh, than what is specified specified over here. And you also have regex. Uh, so rege regex, if you don't know what is regex, regex, uh, it's actually a kind of a language uh, itself. Uh, and it's uh, something like, for example, if I have my postal address, for example, and let's say this is uh, my postal code, and let's say this is my postal code, and here uh, we can say that this uh, field needs to have three, for example, let's say needs to have three um, words and one number in the end. So you can actually do this by using uh, slash uh, W and then plus, which means this is a word and then uh, we we can uh, we have the same thing so let me just show you so we have the same so we have two words right now and then we have three words and you can see over here that this is uh, matched so we have three words and then the final thing that we need is digits so we have d plus which means digits so if we copy and paste this uh, over the regex so if we go to filters custom regex and if you copy and paste this regex over here, uh, it will actually, it should actually work. So people have to enter three words and digits. And those words need to be more than one. So this one should be more than one letter. Oh, sorry, more than one digit. Uh, and if it's only one digit, uh, it will actually, it should not actually, it's, it should be more, one or more than one digit, sorry. So if I have, for example, if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and here I want only digits that are six, exactly six. Uh, so now you can see that this is not working. This is not match, matching anything because the letters right now are five. If I enter seven, it will only match this, the first six one. So this is how you use filters uh, together with regex. And then we have drag to resize. Uh, this can be done uh, with a container, for example. So previously we didn't have this uh, over here on the left, on the right side, sorry, on the bottom side. Uh, so now we can actually drag uh, your container, and you can resize this, resize it this way as, as well, this way as well. Uh, this is basically uh, UI stuff. So I'm not very into UI stuff uh, i prefer actually to write it here it's better for me uh, but yeah you have this option right now so you can you can have it as well you can uh, use it and then we have uh, implement uh, animations for containers uh, sorry implicit uh, animations for containers and those are the in animations i'm not very into animations uh, as well to be honest but uh, you can play with with the animations they're new animations uh, regarding the containers and let me actually show you so this uh, is uh, implicit animations animated by setting uh, setting a target value so whatever that uh, the target value changes the widget animations that uh, property from the old one to the new one you can animate color uh, size changes by using this feature so this is uh, this is about that, and it says want to learn more. Just click over here. So this is the documentation uh, about implicit animations, and this is the Flutter one, and there is a video about it. So if you want to dive in, uh, this is more information about it. And then the second thing, the last thing that we have in this list for this update is uh, show padding in the app uh, builder. Uh, so this is relevantly new. This is new. Uh, previously, we didn't have this, those green um, boxes over here, which are actually representing the padding. So watch if I actually change the top padding to zero, for example, 
you can now see that I don't see uh, the green uh, boxes. But if I change it to 50, for example, you can see that you can actually see the panning, which is actually great. I think this is great visuality and great for UI and for UX, uh, UX uh, builders uh, so they can actually see what is going on and where is this coming from. This is actually coming from the padding. And then let's continue with uh, transform uh, widget. So transform widget, uh, you, it allows you to perform graphic uh, transformation to on a child widget. You can choose uh, from four different types in Flutterflow. This is rotate, scale, screw, and uh, translate. Uh, so using uh, the transform widget in combination with uh, uh, animations, you can build some uh, incredible UI UX effects. So as I said, I'm not a UI guy or UX guy. Uh, so, but this is the uh, this is the actual uh those are the actual uh animations that you can use and now you can use some more animations i'm not sure if i will be able to show you exactly uh but uh, probably uh it's something like that uh but yeah like i said i'm not into animation so if someone knows better please comment to this video so i uh, can show maybe later if someone wants to know or they can just read the comment right uh, below the video so let's continue on we have the upload media via api so actually i did uh, a video a uh, whole tutorial about this uh, section uh, is this is the ability to upload uh, media on uh, using not not in fire uh, store but you can actually right now you can actually i think there is a new option that was not before uh, you can upload actually file uh, or media uh, to superbase as well so if i click upload uh, image now it's asking us where do you want to upload so you have three right now we have three options firebase we have superbase and we have local uh, which is the widget state so if we choose local one uh, this is saved uh, in the locally on the uh, storage device and uh, we can actually use this as bytes and then later send it to the API. And as I said, I did a video about it, so I put it in the description. If you want to know more about it and how you can do it, just watch the video. It's the full tutorial how you can actually do it. And then we have the upgraded uh, project commands. Here are the project commands and they uh, upgraded it. So let's see what they exactly upgraded. So now we have the assign and I don't think we had this option before, uh, but apparently you can add a new command and you can assign it with the uh, with add, right? So I can assign it to some person and I can say just uh, wherever this person is, uh, if you're working uh, with the organization, uh, you can assign different tasks to different people. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a good thing. This is great thing actually uh, when you're working in an organization or where you have uh, collaborations, right? So you when you go to settings, you have the collaboration. Collaboration, why I can say this word, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you know, you get what I mean. <clears throat> so yeah, that's a, that's a good, uh, good upgrade as well. And uh, one of the very good upgrades are actually the disable buttons. I actually wanted to do this uh, because when you have this is usually uh, uh, this is usually used when you have a form, for example, and if someone is not filled the form, uh, the button will be disabled because if someone click the form without filling anything, uh, it will give you it will give you an error or it will uh, give it it will go to the next page if you don't warp it inside a form widget so first you need to form it to uh, warp it into a form widget and then the children of this uh, widget should be uh, text fields and then you can apply some uh, restrictions so people can not uh, submit the form empty or something like that uh, so this is uh, how you can do it right now so we have disable and of course we have a condition so a uh, good thing to know is that 
uh, in the conditions you can actually i didn't know that uh, in a long time but you can actually have uh, here you can have constants so if you go we didn't have that uh, like many uh, years ago when further flow was uh, first created uh, but now you have it so keep in mind that you always can use empty string true false or no and i'm do i'm using this right now so to say if it's false if it's false is equal to true which is never true right it's never true it's never false equals to true uh, but if it's that it's not equal then disable the button so right now the button will be always disabled but for example if we say let's say something like more uh, specific like global properties and let's say if it's android so if it's the user is using android and it's true so if it's using android and this is true then you can actually uh then you can actually disable the button in this case uh, but you can actually use we can use this Sp specific value or we can use from variable and we can choose this variable and we can choose constant and we can choose true or false so we can use true and then it's the same thing like we use a specific value in this case because sometimes i saw that in full flow you don't have the ability to choose specific value so sometimes you have only from variable and if you if your case is like that just keep in mind that you have this option and you can use it this way and then the last thing that I wanted to show you from those uh, lists, we have list a little bit deeper. We will dive into this list as well because this is very interesting, as I said. But the last action that I want to uh, show you from the list is copy to clipboard. So you can have a button and we have a new action over here, which is copy to clipboard. And the copy to clipboard, we have the value, which of course can be taken from specific value or from variable. And this is the variable or the value that we are going to take. Uh, so in this case, it's some text. So when when a user click on this body uh, with this button, uh, it will uh, be in the clipboard some text this value. Of course, right now it will not be because we disable the button, uh, but we can actually enable it like that. And then the honorable mentions, so to say, or other improvements uh, that we have is that. Uh, they added the ability to renew SSL certificates for custom domains. So let me show you uh, quickly uh, what is that and where this, this is. Uh, so if we go to uh, settings and then web, web publishing, uh, this is actually uh, where they're talking about. Uh, this is where you, uh, this is uh, only, uh, this is not visual change. Uh, it's only here uh, for further flow. To let you know uh, that you have this ability if you need it and then uh, we have the uh, you can now update multiple local state variables with one action so that was actually something that was uh, for me i waited for this for a long time because uh, before that you had to stick your uh, your actions uh, one by one you have to write them or uh, select them one by one but right now if i click add action and if i choose update local state now i have this new button which is add field and if i click it i can see all the uh, local states uh, variables that i have in my case i have a lot and i can search uh, for them for example name and i can see that i have name and names so i can have name and this name I can say it, uh, set value or clean value, whatever. And then I have I can have another one. So I can choose another one, click cities, and cities I can say like uh, clear value, for example. And yeah, I can have like as many as as I, as I want. And before that, I had to do a new action and add all the uh, variables with the new actions. And if I want to change ten local states variables from local states i will have to obtain actions but right now we have only one action which is great that's great improvement i really appreciate that one and then the next one it's uh, you can now block users from selecting future dates in daytime picker so if i go over here and select the picker one so it's uh, 
So this is how you do it. Uh, you can have a button, for example, and this button will be date picker. And the action that you have to use, it's date, daytime picker. So click this action. And now you have the ability to actually choose allow past daytime or allow future daytime or allow both. So you can allow both. And of course you cannot disable both, I guess, because uh, what date you should choose only today date, right? And time. Uh, but uh, now you have uh, the ability to block uh, users from selecting future dates. So if you want your users to only select past dates, you enable this. If you want your users to only select future dates, you can enable only this or both. You can enable both. And the next thing that you uh, that we have in the list is uh, when you update a local state variable uh, from within a component or custom widget action, the outer page will now update and reflect the change. So this is something actually that uh, I cannot show you because it's uh, under the hood change. Uh, but what I can actually show you is that right now, if you have a local state update, uh, you can update a variable so let's say for example this name i'll update uh, this name and now we have the option that we didn't have before uh, which is how this local state update will affect your app we have the we have three types of uh, choices here we have the active pages uh, which uh, this will rebuild all your pages that are active in your uh, application we have the current page which will rebuild only this uh, particular page and we have no uh, rebuilds only updates the fields itself and not rebuild any page or components. Uh, so those are the three options that we have. So let me tell you w uh, when you should use which option. So active pages uh, means that uh, every, all the changes will be reflected to every single page that you have in your application. And probably you're thinking, why do I need that? The reason is that if you have a local state in two different pages, for example, a new, a new ones when a local state is updated to be updated in both pages, uh, you need this option because, uh, for example, if a user click of the back button, it will go to the to the back uh, to the back uh, page, uh, and the the reflection of the change of the local state will be not implemented. So it will just see uh, the new value on the page that is currently it, and you see the old value on the page that will that he or she will go back to it. So this is if you want your uh, implementation to be all on pages, uh, I uh, recommend you to use this rebuild to all pages. If you don't care about all, all the other pages or your local state is only visible in one page, then of course. You can use rebuild only the current page. And then the last one is no rebuild. So you're saying why we need to use no, no rebuild. The, the reason for that as well is that when you have something like a table or inputs or something else uh, that will actually reflect your page when something is changed, uh, it's like rebuilding the, the widget or the page. And if you have the page rebuilt, it will actually uh, trigger uh, like your uh, I think it will trigger your queries if you have queries on this page or you have something else on this page it will be triggered so if you don't want to or it will expand or it will if it's expand it will expand or if it's collapsed it will collapse uh, on by default when you load the page so it's basically like reloading the page or re reloading the widget uh, when you update uh, a state a variable from local state so if you don't need this and if you don't want this uh, then uh, just use this no rebuild option uh, before that we didn't have this ability but now we have it so that's great and also now we support json type variables for happy calls Ooh, that's a great actually that's one of my best and one of my favorites because right now you can actually go to happy calls and you go to uh, variables, variables, sorry, and you can actually choose, uh, you can actually choose uh, JSON from here. 
And before that, we didn't have it. So if I choose JSON over here, right now we don't have JSON list, uh, fortunately. Um, but uh, I think this is coming uh, because I spoke with the Flutterflow team and they told me that they're working on it and then thinking to implement this. Uh, so yeah, it's coming, stay tuned. Uh, but it's great news that we have the JSON type uh, right now. And the other thing that we have, it's uh, you can now overwrite uh, containers width and height. So if I go over here and click on the container, uh, we can actually right now, we can overwrite uh, the width and the, uh, the width and the uh, height of this container. Uh, this is the text I'm selecting. That's why I don't see it. But yeah, this is the, uh, this is the future that I'm talking about. And then the second one will be added an action to hide snack bar. We didn't have that before, but right now, if I click over here, I see all my actions, I can search for it. So snack bar, so we have hide snack bar and we have this option right now, which is uh, the current only or all snack bars. So we didn't have this option before and now we have it as well so yeah and the second one it's uh, you can hide the intercom help button from uh, resources help menu so how do you do this we're talking about this button over here bottom right you can click on this uh this question mark and then hide chat unfortunately right now if i hide it and refresh uh, I will actually see the same button, uh, which is not great uh, because if I want to hide it, I want to stay hidden, right? I don't want this button to appear again. Uh, but yeah, right now, this is the case. You can see it over here. It's it's here again. I said, no, don't, don't show again, hide. Uh, but yeah, right now, it's that you have to click it every time or when you open a new page, you have to click it every time. I hope they improve that in the future. And the last four things that uh, that we have is the added ability to choose a, a divider style. So let me show you what is this. When we go to this page over here, click on click and add a divider. So this is a divider, a widget divider, because everything is widget, everything are are widgets, right? So we have this ability right now. So we have the solid. Uh, we have dotted uh, and we have dashed and we have dash dotted so we didn't currently we didn't have that before maybe i can make the thickness 10 so you can probably see it better and then uh, make it black right so right now you can see it now it's dashed now it's dot uh, but yeah you get the idea probably it's not very uh, hard to think about it and uh, uh, and this uh, improvement is actually we can now uh, uh, now officially photoflow is supporting the ability to upload mp3 files uh, but again i must say that i did i will show you how you can do this but i must say that i did actually uh, a tutorial how you can upload any file using photoflow so you don't need uh, to actually upload a specific file because right now you have only the ability to upload PDF, MP3s and uh, images or videos. Uh, but uh, in reality, right now you can upload all the files uh, using this video. I will, I will post uh, a link uh, in the description. You can actually upload any kind of files. Uh, and then the almost the last one, it's not the last one, but you can now reorder uh, components. So if I go to components over here, and it says that you can reorder them. To be honest, I didn't know that we would, we didn't have this option before, uh, but now you have it. So yeah, that's great. And the last one is the add ability to name fonts. So if I go to fonts, uh, this is, uh, sorry, this is fonts, settings, and then team, and then go down here 
and this typography and let's go down a little bit so those are the fonts i don't have any fonts right now but yeah you have the ability to name your fonts so font family name and just name it and then upload your fonts which is great and the last thing that i wanted to show you is actually something that i was uh, complaining about to the Twitter flow team uh, which was because I have so many pages and probably I'm one of the guys that uh, there are not a lot of people who have so many pages but I was complaining that uh, those are not sorted uh, so if you have a lot of pages those, pa those pages are not sorted and now I see that they are not sorted as well uh, but I was talking about the photo flow team and they promised me that they will fix this in the next update so if you have the same problem as me uh, yeah just keep in mind that uh, this will be changed so in the future on the next update they will be uh, they will be uh, ordered uh, alphabetically so thank you very much for watching and please write in the comments below uh, if you have any feature uh, that you want to the flow to implement and i will make sure uh, to talk with the team uh, so they can implement it uh, if I think also this is a future that the uh, flow of course uh, needs to have but I think most of the futures that uh, that I think that they need to have uh, so yeah just write what you want and I'll talk with them thank you very much goodbye take care